This started with 2009. Yes, everything you see here started with 2009. Wow. Today is Taya I know here again and today I have a very special story to share with you guys. How many of you guys know this drink? It's called Wilson's Lemonade. I've been drinking it for like over the past couple years and it was started by two Nigerian brothers and today we're going to be meeting one of those brothers and he's going to be sharing the story about how they came about this very interesting idea. You know when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade and also I'm going to be giving this away to somebody at the end of this video. I signed it. There's a signature on it. Ty, I know. Specially delivered. You have to live in Lagos, Nigeria though. So comment below if you want to win this. Thank you. Let's jump right in. So guys, finally we got to our destination and I'm currently here beside the co-founder of Wilson's Lemonade, Mr. Sheyi Abolaji. How did this get started? So I moved back to Nigeria. Oh, you moved back? Where were you before then? I'm um, in the States. I went to school in California at Stanford University. And then I actually just came back to visit. But when I came back to visit, I felt like, hey, this is where I need to be. Because I have many aunties and uncles in the States that there's always a two year plan. Two, in the next two years, I'm going back home. Oh, like really? 20, oh, 30 years later, oh, they're still yes, in yes, the yes. next two years. <laughs> So I didn't want to become one of those. One of so I just bought a one-way ticket back. Um, they said, by the time I get back, I figure out what I want to do. My mom was just like, well, you know, I, we support you. My father was just like, are you, are you crazy? Like, <laughs> by the time I came back, took over a business that I thought was running, failed at that after a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I was left with, you know, either go back home, call mom and dad to see if they could help me, or try to find something else to do. And so being a, a former athlete was used to living a healthy lifestyle. It was actually very difficult to find anything natural to eat, anything natural to drink. Somebody gave me some orange juice and I was like, this is not orange juice. <laughs> So um, the idea came up to make fresh squeezed orange juice. And I was living right by a university, Covenant University at that point in time. So I went on campus, asked one of the ladies that was running one of the cafeterias there, Mrs. Johnson, thank you. And she gave us an opportunity to pay rent at the end of the month. So we started making fresh squeezed orange juice on the campus there. Oh, so this started inside Covenant University? Yeah, inside, yeah, yeah, cafeteria too. Um, having come here and knowing I failed at my first business, I really couldn't call mom and dad and say, hey, I failed. And I just figured before I pack up and go back home, US was still home at that point in my head, let me try something else. It was a 2000 naira investment, had a little plastic juicer, 700 naira. This started with 2000 naira? Yes, everything you see here started with 2000 naira. Wow. A naira and a dream is what my partner, who happens to be my older brother, is showing, always says, this is a naira and a dream. So we had a naira and a dream and we've been able to start with that. We went from fresh squeezed orange juice to smoothies. And then by the time we started off with the lemonade, that's when things really took off. We just kept on looking for opportunities. My brother's a pharmacist by training. I studied history and philosophy. So what we've been doing with this whole business is just looking for opportunities. You know, I was still going to the market by myself at that point in time. Over day market is where we saw the, the lemons just sitting there and it was just like, ah, you know, when life goes you lemons, make lemonade, grab some lemons. My partner happened to be in town at that point in time. You know, he was working in New York. So he initially would come for a week and then go back. And then the next trip, he came for two weeks. And then the next year he came for three, four weeks went back so it just kept on his his trips here just kept on extending and it's because every time he came there was a new aspect to the business we were making fresh squeezed lemonade at that point just squeezing literally just squeezing and all of this was done manually but everything was manual <laughs> It's crazy, like a lot of cutting and squeezing and consistency sometimes takes starting ugly. We started in a very ugly way. <laughs> Everything was very crude, very ugly, manual. And all we were focused on is just better. Not perfect, not good, just better. Every day we were just focused on getting a little better. It's amazing because, you know, it was one of our mentors, uh, Auntie Baker. I'm just going to be dropping names. These are just <laughs> fantastic people that have helped us along, awesome. this, um, awesome. along this journey. She came and she saw what we were doing she knew a little bit of my history and my story so she was like why are you in Nigeria Stanford kid why, what are you doing here and then uh, you're making smoothies and she just saw that I was just like excited to be creating something and so she was just like hey there's this thing called NAFTAC you should get NAFTAC we had a line of students who were busy pumping and squeezing oh wow. and he was just like hey why don't you just put this thing in a bottle that night is when the business actually started 
because he was just like, put it in a bottle, let's make it a little easier. One big thing was inventory management. There was a lot of loopholes in our operations. We were picking up old bottles and people were laughing at us. Oh, really? We're doing sweepers work, we're doing that. Oh, but yeah? We literally picked up bottles, went home that night, got a new toothbrush, washed out Clean inside. Everything. And uh, next day we made 10 bottles of lemonade. That night, we only sold two bottles, and everybody was like, you see, like, nobody wants the bottles. It's only the cups. Let's keep going. We sold, like, 170, 180 cups, two bottles. But at the end of the night, like, we came with 10. We were able to count eight more bottles. So we are like, wow, now we can keep track of what we actually are really selling. Hmm. You know, the cups, there were just Interesting. too cups, many you don't, you don't even know the amount. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So we thought we were making progress, but every time you looked up, it was like, oh, that, that's a funny movement. So we started making the lemonade that way. We started putting it in bottles. And before you knew it, within a month or two, we started selling more bottles than cups. We went from picking bottles ourselves to everybody on the team at the end of the night picking bottles to there were these old ladies that will walk around like picking up bottles that have you know big big bags of bottles so we hired some of them so even at this early stage you already were building like sort of like a mini team yes yes <laughs> I mean, from the very beginning you know so we were athletes there's so much in life you can just kind of relate to sports so for us everything is just about like one we don't play to have fun we play to win again with the way mom and dad brought us up is you're gonna move fast, move alone, you're gonna move far, like move together, move together right? Hmm. Like one of the most fulfilling parts of this journey for me has just been like building people. You're the leader, you know, but you're not really a leader unless you have other leaders that can challenge you and are actually driving things on their own to move things forward. So what's the space that we currently are now? This is the headquarters of Wilson's Juice Company. This is actually where my bedroom was when I was first in Nigeria for like, I think 13, 15 months. A little shed with a little floor. I had a little any that I would sleep on and roll <laughs> up. Any that was mat. Oh yeah, a little mat, yeah, sorry. I had a little mat that would be like my bed at night, roll it up, yeah. put it behind the desk, and that was my office during the day. Small, compact, you know, but we make a lot of happen. Like I see some old pictures. Way, way, way back. So I was serving when we first started the business. I did a, a program called Said, and that's where I learned oh. about preservatives. This factory that you see now, this is how we started. We were I can see somebody hand juice. Hand, yeah, yeah. Hand juicing. So what does the name Wilson mean? When we first started, we're not formally trained business people, right? Okay. But we play to win. Anything we do, we play to win. And we get very early on, we decided, you know, we're probably Nigerian, but we're trying to be globally relevant. So we wanted a name that sounded, that was easy to pronounce, number one, mm -hmm. and then meant something, right? So Wilson's has a lot to do with pride, integrity, X, Y, Z. Like we research names. Some people say Wilson's, whichever way, it's still Wilson's. <laughs> Probably Nigerian, but globally relevant, could sit on the shelf anywhere. We're proud to be different, right? When everybody was doing the round bottles, we had square bottles. Mm -hmm. And then better is that emphasis, not on being perfect, not on competing with anybody, just mm -hmm. we want to be better than we were yesterday. That's like the underlying philosophy behind everything we do. What motivated you to, you know, leave USA yeah. and come down to Nigeria? A lot of people are living here, going there. What do people say like, are you, like, were are you, you crazy? Okay? Are you okay? That, that, that's it, are you okay? <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay? Like, <laughs> in a very simple way. So one of my closest mentors when I was in school was a guy called uh, Professor Klopp. And it was like a very, you know, very direct, kind of blunt dude. And one thing that he said, I was taking a, a civil engineering course with him. And towards the end of the course, he said something that really struck me. He was like, um, what disappoints me many of you Stanford students is, you come to one of the best schools in the world, you get the best education, and then you go out and you settle. And you have kids that go like no name schools and they go out and they change the world. So it's like, so look, all of you guys have a decision to make. You're gonna live a life of comfort or you're gonna live a life of impact. For me, it really kind of like struck a chord that my first job out of school, I was making more money than my parents made after 25 years in the US. You know, I was able to send money home. I had a house, I had cars. I was making too chilling. much money for my yeah. age. <laughs> and it was like, it was very comfortable. And it just kind of kept on ringing in the back of my mind, like life of comfort or life of impact. What I saw in Nigeria was an opportunity to make impact. And I saw also opportunity to make a lot of money. And I, we've been doing it. You know, the money hasn't come pouring in yet. Clearly we've made a lot of impact. Or we're employing directly 60, 70 people. Indirectly, we have three, 400 farmers in our network. You know, we have some people that are working with us on a contract basis, you know, sales and, and uh, merchandising across the country. And um, now we're trying to flip it into like that money side. So 
it needs, needs to start coming in. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. You, you mentioned something now that struck me. Where do you get your products from? So we get it from all parts of Nigeria. We got a little bit north, Kanu, Kaduna side. Oh, really? So definitely what you're doing is impacting a lot of farmers out there. The lady that we bought the first small bucket of lemons from, she still supplies us lemons. She only supplies us like a bag or two at a time. So now it's just off of like GP. She was with us from the beginning that mm -hmm. we're still, you know, patronizing her. And every now and again, I see her and she like says prayers. It's like, ah, I sent my child to university after this business. Oh, wow. You know, blah, 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 blah. Who would know? My mom that's selling lemons Can't as a graduate now. And she's still like one, two bags we're buying. These are lemons. These are limes. Lemon, lime, lemon, lime. So some are green, some are yellow. What we do is we wash everything here. So all that gets done out here, depending how many lemons we get. Sometimes we get 50 bags, sometimes it's 100 bags. So we do all the pre-treatment out here before we take it inside for a final rinse. And then now we start to juice. So this is after production, it comes back out here. I think we're loading some out right now. Oh, okay. So we get some people, different parts of the country, um, dealers, retail outlets that we're supplying. Guys, the last time I wore lab coat was when I was in secondary school. <laughs> when we were doing chemistry, practical. <laughs> and even at that, it still did not pass. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our finished goods store. As we produce, we're producing against demand. We take into consideration how the orders come in, how we supply, the shelf life, and our production dates. So everything is like extra precaution until after that cap gets on the bottle. So all this we were doing by hand before, but now it's semi-automatic, getting closer to fully automatic. You wanna, you wanna carry a couple? Yeah, I wanna carry one. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just cool now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is style, I know. <laughs> Dude, this pack. This one, that's my dish. So, like, how many of these bottles do you produce in a day? Our capacity is about 5,300 bottles per ship per line. I can also see different types. Yes, 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 we have different brands. It seems like this is our quality or something. Yes, yes, this one is, uh, it's called Troops, Troops Hot. This one we try to spice it up a little bit for people who like to go out, who like to have a, a bit more of a fun time. They are very tasty, just come to this too. So you pick out one. Mmm. This is, you're going to party and you want to mix something with your NFC. NFC to eat, to my love, you to eat. So how do you come up with your flavors? See, with each of our products, there's a story behind it. And all these stories, it's like a real life story. You know, so Wilson's, the old fashioned, has uh, Mama Grace and lemons falling off of a truck. And that's just like, you know, when life throws you lemons, make lemonade, make lemonade, right? So make something out of every negative situation. When we came to Fifun, this is a different brand, Fifun Toto. So our goal is to make health living more fun. And we realized our Wilson's brand was getting pushed further and further towards premium. So we came up with another brand to do that specifically, right? So that's how we came with Fifun. You're a storyteller with your products. Um, with our products. <laughs> with our products, maybe, yes. Not as good a turn stories as yeah. you are, of course, but we're trying to do something that's for everybody. We want to be accessible. We spent about two years trying different formulas Google's our friend, YouTube is our friend, when it comes uh, to okay. learning That's about nice. recipes and learning about processes. So what you're trying to say is you learned a lot on Google and YouTube. Oh wow. From just that, the internet. Those are our teachers. Like I studied history and philosophy. Are you guys hearing there? All those food are always like, okay, I don't know how to learn this. You have I don't know how. in your hand. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how is no longer an excuse. <laughs> not in this not in this day and age. How we even learn how to manufacture. We Googled how to preserve juice. And it took us to a, a four-page study. Wow. And in those four pages, we learned about sorting, processing, pasteurization, bottling, preservatives. Four pages. Having to search and being able to just focus on, we need to learn what we need to do, not what machine we need. Yeah. And so we were able to now you know, use the tools that we have to fulfill the purpose that we needed. People don't believe it, we started with 2009, but it was like, no, we started with 2009, and hours of research, and a lot of trial and error, with, you know, 10, 10, nada, 20, 20, nada, we didn't have a million nada to, to burn. To burn, yeah? You know? Just trying out small Yeah, scale. we were trying small scale. And you feel that helped you learn it better than if you had oh, plenty of money at your... I tell you, 100%. So, because we didn't, we weren't trained, we were able to start from the foundation, the basics of, what is the goal you're trying to accomplish? Hmm. 
And there are many different ways, you know, um, on our corner water. Oh, no, right. no, 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 only there are many roads, many roads to, the, to one market to one or something market, like this, yeah. right? <laughs> There's no excuse for failure. You need to find a way from what you have. So from that 2000, we were able to now say, okay, how can we do it? We went from a plastic juicer to a squeezer. squeezer. Before we went to build a manual of a machine that was crushing. Before we, like, it was step and, by step by step by step. I, I remember you saying right? something earlier. You said most of the machines here was built here. Yes. Why did you decide to locate your business here instead of like the popular Lagos? This is the only place we have property. At that point in time, it was like, all right, you spend money on getting a prime location somewhere, or you spend money getting going with what you're trying to do. Using what you have to get what you want at all points in time. Not waiting until you get what you need to then do what you want. No, use what you have to just take the next step, right? So we've been, again, create better. That better is just better than we were yesterday. Is this moving in the right direction? Let's go. Is it ideal? No. Is it the ideal situation? Is it the ideal location for a factory? No. no. But this is what we have. So it's more like, how could you extract the juice from the lemon of this location? <laughs> Look, I wish you were already extracted. And, and everything is about how do you make lemonade from lemons? As soon as you wake up, everybody's just throwing lemons. Give us all the stories of bitter lemons building a business in Nigeria. Ah, one of the biggest challenges is people. Like it poses one of the best opportunities, but it's, it's actually the biggest challenge. There's education and certification, and then there's education that teaches one how to think or just people just being curious on mm -hmm. their own. And it's just, it's been challenging finding people who have that natural curiosity. So there's a lot of yes sir, yes man. Is like we've been trying to teach people to no say why, argue, Ar yeah, you know, argue, yeah, ask questions, give your own your own your hair own is important yeah. for us. Yeah. There's no really like black and white answer. There's no right answer. There's different levels of rights, different levels of wrong. And then there's a lot of you know confidence that you have to build in yourself to be able to argue for what you think is right, not what you know is right, what you think is right. Second is this environment. You know, I've been in Nigeria now 13 years. It's just realizing that, you know, the bigger we get, the more we're exposed to the elements of, you know, Nigeria. It's not the electricity, it's not the bad roads. The core of this is, you know, just a deep-seated, deep-rooted poverty mentality that feels like, you know, somebody has to lose in order for you to advance. To win, yeah. They see Wilsons everywhere, and these are now just like specifically government agents. We thank God for the progress, yeah. and we're not ungrateful, but it's so far from where we're going, and we feel like we're just starting to scratch the surface of the potential of this business. But it seems like every agency around us feels like, ah, now we've hammered it, now it's time to reap. Mm. You're eating the seeds before we've even had time to germinate. Mm. If you must eat, eat, eat a little less. Don't eat with both hands and mouth and everything open. Take it slower, let this thing grow, and it will feed many, many more people for generations. What do you see as the future of the company? And also, are you open to investment in the future? We have an expansion model that is unique to this environment, but is, is very basic and very simple. You know, our goal from inception, A127, the Africa's most valuable natural beverage company, by December 31st, 2027. Everything we do is towards that goal. We're open to the right investment. Right? Money is one aspect to success in this environment. And I think anybody who feels like ah, all I need is money. money doesn't really understand business. Yeah, we're open to the right type of investors. There's a spot in Lekki that I always go to to go and eat Amala. That's where I used to buy <laughs> with since then after eating Amala and Lekki. Lemonade and Amala. Wonderful combination. I like eating Amala and Lekki. <laughs> so what's your advice to a lot of young entrepreneurs out there who are looking to you know, start something huh. all over Africa? I'll say it, and I'll say it, and, and many people won't want to hear it. There's no pride in entrepreneurship, and there's no shame in being an employee. What we need to reorientate ourselves is to focus on where we're adding the most value. My income that I'm taking from this company is one-tenth, if not less, than what I was making 13 years ago. I'm saying that because most people think like, yeah, entrepreneurship is the way to, to great wealth. Yeah. That is a path to great wealth. That's one of many. Another path to great wealth is just adding a tremendous value. No matter where you are, if you add a tremendous value, you will become wealth, especially on this continent, right? So, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be an entrepreneur. The question is like, why? If you really understand your why, and can answer that why to two, three levels deep, you may be better suited going to go work for a company that's entrepreneurial or being the number 500 person in a very 
steady successful business but your contribution makes that company a little bit more successful don't focus on being an entrepreneur focus on adding value and if that means you need to start something on your own great and majority of us will fail that's just the reality i'm focused on failing forward continuously you know but many people rush into i want to have my own business i want to be an entrepreneur they have no business doing it that is 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 not sexy it's a lot of hard work it's extremely lonely there's like there's nobody there are few people who will understand the amount of stress and pressure that you're gonna be under. Most people would be extremely valuable as a part of a company, not the head of, of a the company. company. Thanks a lot for sharing your story and thanks a lot for you know, sharing the Wilson story. I'll keep drinking Wilson. If you're interested in learning more about the company or reaching out to them, maybe you want to supply or you want to buy a bulk or you want to yes. you want to use it for your restaurant or whatever, reach out to them. I'm going to link them in the description below. And yeah, guys, that's all we have to share with you today. If you like this video, as always, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.